Hey, hey, how you doing? David Taub here, co-creator of nextlevelguitar.com, and man, do we have a treat for you, because today I am kicking off an exclusive set of lessons and interviews with the world-renowned guitarist Lou Paolo. Lou was Les Paul's rhythm guitar player for like almost 30 years. I had a chance recently to meet Lou Paolo in uh, New Jersey, and I'll tell you, probably the nicest guy you ever are gonna meet in your life. Just what, what, a, what a humble, nice man. And I'll tell you, man, the guy, <laughs> the guy is something. I, I don't know if I've ever seen guys who, uh, someone who can move through these incredible altered jazz chords so fast and so fluidly and be able to make so many substitutions. The, the guy is just a legend. Uh, he has shared the stage with just about every epic guitar player ever. I'm talking about, you know, besides being with the Les Paul Trio and playing with Les for almost 30 years, um, he shared the stage with and recorded with players like Keith Richards, Paul McCartney, Billy Gibbons, Slash, Steve Vai, George Benson, Steve Miller, Jose Feliciano, Jimmy Page, Tommy Emanuel, George Benson, Zach Wilde, Jeff Beck, Al Dimiola, B.B. King. I mean, it's, it's a who's who list of, of the greatest players, some of the greatest players of all times, and Lou has either recorded or shared the stage with them uh, throughout his career. He's known as the man of a million inversions because his chord knowledge is so extensive and his rhythm playing is so spot on. And I, I had a, a, an amazing opportunity when I was on the East Coast recently. I went to see him play at the Iridian Club, and that's the same club where Les Paul played every Monday night. Uh, up until he passed away in 2009. And uh, Lou Paolo continues to play Monday nights at the Iridian Club in New York City. If you ever get a chance, go to it. It's, it's fun and uh, a great time. And he does a lot of recording. They just, he just finished up doing a Thank You Less tribute record. Just incredible guitar players all signing on to pay tribute to Les and keep his legacy of music alive. And also he's he's just finished up the New Jersey Guitar Mafia record, which is another really interesting and fun project. And he'll tell you all that in a minute. So um, enjoy these, these little lessons and interviews with Lou. Keep on rocking. I'm David Taub, co-creator of nextlevelguitar.com. We'll see you soon. Check this out. <laughs> Bug me staying there. <laughs> so, no, no. Something like that, anyway. So I figured, well, let me try to make a guitar that I like. I always like rosewood fingerboard, so I said, let's make the guitar with rosewood fingerboard. Mahogany back. And they never did a mahogany and ebony front. They used to make the gold tops this way with the gold front. So they said, we'll try that. And they made the first one, and they said it come out beautiful. And I wanted a P90 up front, which we put up here, and dirty fingers in the back. And the reason for that is because a jazz player could get a nice pretty sound with a P90. chord change. Nice. And then you could mix with the dirty fingers in the back. That sound. And then over here with the dirty fingers. You can get that roll sound, classic rock. And that was the first time that they ever did that combination. A P90 and dirty fingers and Wow, the power on this thing is unbelievable. I think I have it on two. And you can hear it. And of course.
course, my signature on the 12th fret. Didn't make it to Gordy, which I like, just the signature there. Chrome on the bridge, tulip on the tulip pegs. Not not the chrome ones, I just wanted the tulip ones there. Uh, they did everything the way I liked it, and, just, and block inlays, incidentally. The best part of this, though, is when I turn the guitar over in the back here, it says, Made in the USA. That's what I really like, right there. Made in the USA, I'm so proud of that. to uh, see what this looks like and the specs on the guitar, you can look up Lou Paulo's signature guitar and it'll come up or you could look at uh, thegibson.com and look for Lou Paulo's signature guitar. Uh, Amazon has it on their site, Musician Friend, Guitar Center, Sam Ash, every Gibson dealer has it listed so if, I would like you to look up the specs and it will tell you more about the guitar and I think it's an excellent, excellent guitar. Thank you. Yes, well, the, the project we just finished is called Thank You Less, and it's um, a whole bunch of different people who have loved Les Paul and idolized Les Paul like I have all my life and worked with them. I had the pleasure of working with them, and we're doing Les Paul songs and using a lot of, um, let's say, musicians, uh, rock players, to blues players, to uh, uh, singers, and all the, uh, compiling this whole thing together, and it, it, it's excellent of, of all the songs that we're doing for Les Paul, called Thank You Les. Oh, Keith, he's a ball. Keith is, is one of the greatest guitar players out there, and it's, uh, and when, on this project, he's playing something completely different. Um, it's one of Les Paul's songs, and he did an excellent job on it, and also singing on it, too, with me. So I, I worked with Slash, uh, let's see, in 1980s, I think it was 80, somewhere in 88, somewhere 89, when he was first with Guns N' Roses. And uh, he would come in and play a minor blues, usually, with us, and I, something to track with a major blues and he did a great job on it, a great job. Oh, Steve Miller is always a ball. We've worked with Steve since 1988, that, that's for sure I know the date. Um, and every time he came into New York, he would stop in and sit in with the Les Paul Trio. Plus we did a lot of different little gigs with Steve and it, it, it's a pleasure working with him. That's Les's godchild. All the artists that are on the uh, Thank You Les CD, DVD, and documentary that we just completed. Um, I met them all working with Les Paul from Fat Tuesdays, 1984, all the way up to the present time. And we were friends from uh, that time. And they all loved Les, they all loved working with me also. And uh, that's how I compiled all these people together. In fact, and some of them I didn't even have to call them, they called me. He said they wanted to be part of the project. And there's so many more, so, so many more. They're great friends, great musicians, great entertainers, and I love them all.